Hey, you made it back for part two. I'm glad, guys. If you haven't seen part one yet, go look in the description below and I will leave a link there for you. But if you've already seen part one, get ready because today we're talking about clamps. We're talking about arms. I know we already talked about the boom arm, but there's different kinds of arms out there than just the boom arm. So without further ado, let's jump right into it and roll that bumper. So now that we are done with the stand portion of our program, um, I hear you asking, well, does that mean I have light stands holding all this lighting equipment up in my studio? No, I don't. As a matter of fact, holding my key light up. Oh, hold on. This is, this is going to take a minute. All right, guys, I've zoomed out a little bit to uh, try to get as much of this next item in as possible. I don't exactly know what this is. I know that Matthews calls it a mat pole, but I just call it a giant shower curtain rod because that's basically what it is. It has these kind of suction cuppy ends here, and you basically use friction to push it into a wall. You open this up right here, push it to where you need to go, and then close this down, and this little mechanism right here pushes it another inch or so to really clamp it onto the wall, and you can actually hold a considerable, a considerable amount of weight on this. And uh, actually, this is what I hold up uh, my key light with, which is an Aperture 120D. And uh, yeah, I'll show you that right now. Okay, so basically, just like a shower curtain rod, you want to put as much pressure over that direction as you can, so that way the friction keeps it on the wall. And then ride this one over. You want to make sure it's level. I'm kind of using this cross, there's a cross beam right here, and I'm using that to kind of gauge how far off I am. So that way it's all lined up. So you put as much pressure as you can. I like to use my thumb here to kind of hold it in place so I can use my other hand. Clamp this down and you'll see it kind of clamps it as hard as it can against the wall. And now it's, you can hold about 20, 30 pounds depending on what the spec sheet is. I think this one's 25 pounds, which is plenty enough for my Aperture 120D. So that's the mat pole, but how do you attach the light to a mat pole? There's no mounting gear on there. That's where you get to my favorite clamp, the Cardellini, or if you buy it from Matthews, Mathalini, because Matthews likes to put their name on everything. Hence, the mat pole. That's also a Matthews product. If you haven't noticed by now, Matthews is the king in the grip world. Impact makes some good stuff too for a little bit cheaper, but Matthews is the brand that runs the roost. Now... This is a Matthews Cardellini clamp. And well, first let me show you what a Cardellini clamp is. Pretty self-explanatory. Cardellini clamp has jaws on it. Jaws that you can kind of clamp onto things. That's why it's called a clamp. I don't know if I'm good at this or not. <laughs> Hold on, let me get something for you to, for it to clamp onto. Hopefully I don't break my puzzle. But uh, okay, so let's say you want to clamp a light onto this luxurious puzzle. Now the first thing I like to do, because you can see this jaw will move any way you want it to make it more, uh, I don't know why they do it, but they do it for a reason I'm sure. And then I like to spin it tight, clamp it down and voila, clamped to my puzzle. You can put on anything that'll take a uh, baby pin adapter right there. And that's how you clamp onto a, oh this? You, you want to see how I will blow your mind with this little bad boy. Oh man, oh yes, yes, he did do it, he did do it, yeah. Uh, now I have to put it back to get, this might take me a minute, hold on. See, see, it didn't take me that long, and all it's, well, I'm not gonna disclose how long it took me. My show, and I'll tell you if I want to. So what's the difference between the Matthews that cost a little more and the impact? I mean, how different can Cardellini clamps really be, right? Well, let me show you. This guy here is an impact. They are different sizes. That's another thing I should have told you. These come in different sizes. Some of them come with the clamp in the middle, some on the end. It just depends on what your grip needs are at that time. This is an impact Cardellini that I'll match up next to the Matthews Cardellini. No, Impact does not just make them longer. This is just a longer Cardellini clamp. Now, let's say 
This bad boy is all the way. You need to clamp something really, really big. It's easy to get the jaws that wide open. With the impact, every time you go to spin, it does not want to spin very fast at all. So while the impact gets the job done, you can see the Cardellini or the Mathellini from Matthews just is so sweet. And that's some, as somebody told me, some nice, or maybe I saw it on a YouTube video. Filmmaker ASMR. I forget where I saw it. Maybe, maybe I made it up in my own head. Let's just pretend I made it up. I didn't make it up. Cardellini clamps, my favorite clamps in the grip world. All right, so the first thing I do is make sure my Cardellini clamp is unlocked enough to fit over the bar. Put it where you want over the bar. I like to push the jaws up like this, so that way I can just see if I can do it without blocking your view, so I can spin this freely. Couple things, uh, again, because this is the impact, it doesn't spin as well. And when you're doing this, make sure your finger isn't right underneath here because you can pinch it when turning. I've done that several times and it does not feel good. So yeah, make sure it's level. Tighten it up nice and uh, boom, you got a Cardellini clamp all ready on your uh, mat pole. So first things first, since I don't have a stand right here, I have nowhere for the ballast to go. So what I like to do is take a little safety cable, loop that over the top. Lock it in and just hook the ballast onto it. Just like that. So now the ballast is there and it's got a place to go. Normally I do that after the I put the light up, but this time I didn't for whatever reason. All right, now you've done the light before, I'm sure. You just put it onto the pin, tighten it up, make sure it's nice and tight. And boom, you can just set this up where you like it. I like mine right about there. And we got a key light. So that is how I hook up my light to the mat pole. Um, what happens if your Cardellini clamp breaks or something in that rigging doesn't work correctly and your light would want to fall, right? Well, that's where these little bad boys come in. These are safety cables, and what is their job? They're the last line of defense between your light and the floor. So you attach these in case something fails, so that way this will catch the item instead of the floor, catching your very, very expensive light. Yes, I, I don't know this from personal experience, I just know that I love these safety cables so much. I think I'm slowly losing my mind in this grip world. I hear you asking, well, what on God's green earth is this weird contraption? This is a quacker clamp. Can somebody in the class tell me why they call this a quacker clamp or a duckbill clamp? No? It's because this kind of looks like a, a, the bill of a duck. That's why they call it a quacker clamp or a duckbill. Anyways, what it's for, you can see where the mounting point would be. So this is how you would mount it to the C-stand itself. But what would you put in here? Well, anything you want to, but what I like to put in there are bounce boards. Now, while I don't have any bounce boards with me because I'm very unprepared, let's just try some foam core, huh? You put your piece of foam core in, you clamp it down, and now it's not going anywhere. And you can put it on your C-stand and do whatever you want. Bam, the quacker clamp and foam core. What is the black foam core for? Well, that's for negative fill. So let's say I have something white, like, I, oh, I do right over here. And I want to take some of the light away from my face. I put this piece of blackness right here, and boom, some of the light goes away. I don't know if this is working or not, but it's what it's supposed to be doing. Another way to attach foam core is with this Matthews pitchfork thing. I don't exactly know what it's called. I think it's just called a foam core holder. Basically, it just has four spikes. You stab them into the foam core and you have a very nice holder. And yeah, you also have a deadly weapon if you want to make a post-apocalyptic movie. <laughs> so I have a microphone sitting right off screen here. And before I, I show you what's holding it up, I just want to show you the whole rig here. 
So then, now that my illusion of me just talking into space and not a microphone at all is ruined, let me take the microphone down and show you the next thing we are going to talk about. Friction arms. While wanting to talk about friction arms, I have come up with a problem. This is what I was using to hold up the microphone, so what am I going to use now? I have an idea, hold that thought. This is a wall plate. Can you guess what a wall plate does? That's right, a wall plate gets nailed or screwed to a wall and then you can mount stuff to your wall. I have a few up here holding up my friction arms where I ran out of Cardellini's and then had to buy more Cardellini clamps. So yeah, this I'm going to use to hold up the microphone. So I'm just going to put my microphone there, tighten it down, readjust the microphone on my, oh, Safety cable's holding it up. Readjust my microphone, and I have a little microphone rig ready to go so I can tell you about friction arms. Now in this office, I have two different kinds of friction arms. One is holding up this camera right here. You can't see it, but I can see it. The others are holding up three lights. So uh, I'm gonna have to take down one of them. I guess it's going to be have to be my sexy orange backlight right there. So hold on, I'm gonna take that friction arm down. Okay, so now that you've seen my microphone rig, I'm going to put it just out over here. You can probably still see it. I can't, <laughs> I can't turn the monitor around and look at me because I can't stop looking at myself if I do so, and you, that will just be distracting to you. So these are friction arms that I used for the microphone and for my lighting situations. Let me turn this light off and take this grip head off. Take the other grip head off. All right. Now we have two different kinds. Of... Now we have two different kinds of friction arms. Now when I first was looking into putting my lights up off of stands, I found these friction arms. Now these friction arms are good. And what a friction arm does is basically you can untighten it and move these around however you want, retighten it and you can get all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Now these work very good, but they had limitations. I believe Impact make these, but when I found the Manfrotto kind of friction arms, I really wish I just got those because not only can they move in the same ways that the buy friction arms can, but they can also go 360, and so you can really match these up. So again, with these friction arms, you can get any kind of shape and size you want. You can get, configure it any way you like. We can make an H and lock it into place. And you got some weird kind of H. Now the only drawback with these is they couldn't turn left and right. They had to go in a straight line. And that worked fine at first, but the Manfrotto ones I found can go in every direction you can imagine. So I can go this way, this way. I can flip them around. I can do anything. They're a little bit more expensive, but they are well worth it. And they can hold just so much weight with that friction. It is amazing. So yeah, that's uh, friction arms. Now those are the bigger friction arms that I use, but there's also smaller friction arms that I use. This friction arm is attached to a mini super clamp. So basically what I like to do with this is attach it to my tripod and I like to mount my monitor to it when I don't have monitor mounts like I do on uh, the camera that I'm using now. So basically you just Unscrew your super clamp, clamp it down to whatever you want to mount it to. Move this into any way you see fit, tighten it down, and voila, you have a mount for any place, anytime, as long as you have somewhere to screw it down to. Now there's also little clamps that have ball heads like this one. It's just a normal little metal clamp with a ball head attached to it. So anything with a quarter 20 thread can be screwed right on. Clamps are another thing that fall into the grip category because there's all sorts of different things you need to clamp together. And the most basic form of these clamps is what's called the C47. What's a C47? These are C47s. You might know them as clothespins, but for one reason or another, in the film world, they're called C47s. But these come in handy all the time to uh, clamp down duvetine onto things and uh, anything you just need a little clamp on. They're cheap. You have a lot of them, and yeah, that's a C47s. These are my normal clamps. I have them separated into metal and plastic. 
Nothing too tricky here. They're just plastic and metal clamps. Again, just to clamp things onto stands, clamp diffusion onto things, you know, just anything you need to clamp for, it's nice to have them at your disposal. So that's gonna do it for part two of getting to know your grip equipment. If you like this video, hit that button over there. People told me from the first video they didn't get bit by the like button, so it is accessible right now. If you like what I do here and you wanna see part three, hit the subscribe button, it would really help me out. If you want to talk about any of this stuff, or again, just want to tell me things I've done wrong, hit me up in the comment section below, as long as you remember, this isn't a competition, let's all rise in this business together. I'll see you for part three.